Good evening. My name is Michael McCoy. I'm the sheriff of Peoria County, and it's a pleasure to be here tonight for Peoria Life and to talk about uh, my favorite subject, um, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, the St. Jude Midwest Affiliate in Peoria, Illinois, and the St. Jude Runs. So I think it's important uh, before we talk about the runs to let everybody know about St. Jude and how it started. So I think everybody knows that it started with Danny Thomas, uh, who co-founded St. Jude, or founded St. Jude. And so Danny Thomas was a struggling, really struggling comedian, and he didn't know what to do with his life. And one night he went out back of his church and he knelt down by a statue of St. Jude Thaddeus, and he said, St. Jude, if you give me a way in life, if you show me the way I need to go, I will build a shrine to you. And so he said that prayer, he went home, and believe it or not, the next week he got a call for a, a little gig to do some comedy. Then he got a, another call to do some more comedy. Then he got a chance to do a TV show, and then he became famous. And so he remembered the, that promise, and he always talked about that promise. So in about 1957, um, uh, 58, really in 56 it really started, he drew an idea of a children's hospital. And it was a little shape of a circle with four little tentacles out. And he wanted to treat kids in the southern part of the United States that didn't have any money. So he got together with a, a minister and a rabbi and a priest. And he wanted to build it in Memphis, Tennessee, because that's where they thought that the most need for the kids was. So in 1957, they went around the country with a napkin trying to raise money, a million dollars for this hospital. He had 12 people that were on the bottom, uh, bottom rung with him. And a couple of them were from Peoria. One was Jim Maloof, obviously, and one was Rich Eunice. So they started going throughout the country. They started raising some money. And um, in 1960, the hospital opened, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. And it had a couple premises. Number one was that no child shall ever pay here. If you come to St. Jude, you don't have to pay. And number two is, we're gonna allow the doctors to do their research and their study without interference. And so, how do you do that? So, when they started raising money, they formed a corporation called ALSAC, A-L-S-A-C, American Lebanese Syrian Associated Charities. So you had ALSAC over here, and you had St. Jude Children's Research Hospital here. So when you raise money, even today, the money goes to ALSAC. St. Jude then, the hospital asks ALSAC for money to run the hospital. ALSAC gives them the money. And why is that important? This is where Danny Thomas was really, really a genius. The doctors at St. Jude don't worry about anything except doing research and treating the kids. They don't worry about paying bills. They don't worry about scheduling. They don't worry about insurance. They worry about nothing else. All the money that we raise goes to ALSAC. They give it to St. Jude, and the doctors there just do their job. And when you think about that, that's really a genius, genius thing. If we could all do that of our work, if we didn't have to worry about building people, we didn't have to worry about ordering things. All we did was say, I want to order this, and you send it out, and tomorrow they deliver it, and you don't have to pay for it. That's pretty cool. So that was a genius thing that Danny Thomas did. So the hospital opened. They started treating patients. The average cancer survival rate in the United States was about 4% then, in 1960. So they started raising money and they started getting bigger. Jim Maloof became a member of the Board of Directors. There's a St. Jude Board of Directors and the ALSAC a Board of Governors. And they meet at the same time. And Jim Maloof kept going to Danny Thomas and saying, we need to have an affiliate in Peoria, Illinois. We need to have an affiliate. We got a big Lebanese community here and we need to come to Peoria, and we need to treat the kids in our area at, our, at a hospital in Peoria the same as you do in Memphis. And so at the board of directors meeting, um, true story, at a board of directors meeting, he was lobbying to try to get this plan in where Peoria could have an affiliate hospital. And the board uh, was not gonna vote his way. It wasn't gonna happen. He was told, you don't have the votes. And at that time, uh, at that part of the meeting, Danny Thomas walked into the meeting. Jim Maloof asked for a recess in the meeting. They gave him a recess in Memphis. He went outside and he said to Danny Thomas, they're not going to give us this hospital in Peoria. He says, We're, we got all this. We can do this. We need this affiliate. 
they're not going to do it. I'm going to get voted down. Danny Thomas says, well, let's just see what happens. So they went in to the boardroom, and Danny Thomas says, before you vote, I just got one thing to say to everybody. I want this hospital in Peoria, Illinois. And the vote was unanimous. We got the St. Jude Midwest affiliate in Peoria, Illinois, which opened up in uh, 1972. So the cancer rates have gone higher. The kids are being um, serviced better. The doctors are doing more work. So where has the hospital gone from 1962 to today? It, it's really hard to believe. When I went down there in 1982, it was the little tentacles and a seven-story building. Now it's 76 acres and right by the bridge in Memphis, Tennessee, um, five blocks uh, from the Bass Pro Shops, Pro Bass Shops, right there. And so they're all working together to try to do it. They only have about 120 beds in that hospital. Everybody's treated as outpatients. But no child at St. Jude pays for travel, food, treatment, medicine, none of that. It's free. So when all these doctors are there and what they're doing is they're finding the cure rates, they're, they're doing the research. And so what happens is when they get that, they share that with everybody in the world for free. If a doctor from California calls and says, you know, I got a kid at my place that's on a protocol that you've got for, for a certain form of cancer, and you know what, we don't have anything to treat it with, does St. Jude have that protocol? Absolutely. Here it is, we send it to you. But in that protocol, he has to have certain, or she has to have certain kinds of chemotherapy or certain kind of a, a medicine. St. Jude says, not a problem, we send that to you. It's free. So. The love affair between Peoria and Memphis, starting in 1962, opening in Peoria in 1972, flourishes to this day. In Peoria, for example, right now, they're seeing 20 patients a day, 100 patients a week. When it first opened in Peoria, it was a little room at Methodist Hospital. Now the St. Jude Midwest affiliate is at OSF at the Jim and Trudy Maloof Clinic downstairs. They have eight beds full time. They're seeing the 20 people a day. The cancer rates are continuing to, the success rates for cancer are continuing to rise. We're getting to treat more people. The vision at St. Jude is unbelievable. To have the 76 acres, to have a medical director named James Downing who has visions that one out of every 10 kids in the world is cured of cancer in the world. St. Jude's new goal is to become global. They're going to go to six or seven different countries with a global program, and they're going to treat kids in other countries with the same protocols that they're treating people in the United States with. And the goal for St. Jude is not just to cure the kids in the United States, but to cure the kids worldwide, and to get that one number to two, to four, to five, to six. So the cancer rates now, where do they stand now? The average is over 80%. In some forms of cancer, in 1962, when they opened up, we're at 4%. In um, ALL, a common form of cancer, now 95%. Retinoblastoma, uh, cancer of the eye, was 10%. Now it's 85%. So what they're doing and what you're seeing uh, with the research that these doctors do is totally unbelievable. And so Peoria has become one of the, is, was the very first affiliate it's the biggest affiliate, and now modeled after Peoria, there are seven other affiliates in the United States. So there's a total of eight affiliates that send kids to Memphis, and Memphis send kids back, and they get treated locally. And why is it important to have an affiliate in Peoria? Because if your child's getting treated, and it's going to be treated for nine months, a year, or two years, and you have to uproot your family and go to Memphis, that's tough. But if they can be treated here in Peoria, most of the time you can stay at your own home and get treated here saves jobs, saves families, saves a, 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 just a good family um, relationship is what we're working on in, in Memphis. They have housing in Memphis. We're trying to get housing in Peoria. We have several places here they stay. So the St. Jude in Peoria, St. Jude of Memphis, good partnership. Everybody's winning. So in 1982, um, really in 1980, I was uh, sitting at Landmark one day counting laps as people ran for St. Jude. I weighed 270 pounds. I was a chief of police in Peoria Heights, and, and I was counting laps because I couldn't run a lap. And then somebody would come by, I'd put a little check by their name, and, and they'd do that. And we raised $7,500 that night. 
And I was sitting there with a friend of mine named Gene Pratt. And I said to Gene, you know, there's got to be a way to raise more money than $7,500. This running craze is pretty cool. People are starting to run all over everywhere, 1980. So I said, you know what, let's, let's take a group of people, and we got the affiliate in Peoria, let's run to Memphis, Tennessee, and turn around the hospital and we'll run back. And we thought, what a great idea. And the next day we met to talk about it, we got out a map and found out that was about a thousand miles. All of a sudden it was the dumbest idea in the whole world. <laughs> and we thought, okay, that, that's out, so what are we going to do? So we're going to drive to Memphis, Tennessee, and we're going to run back. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it next year. We're going to do it in 1982. We put an ad in the paper. Charity run. Run from Memphis to Peoria for St. Jude. Anybody that's interested, meet at Landmark Recreation. We're going to take applications. We're going to see how many people want to do it. Oh, by the way, before you can go, you've got to raise $500 for St. Jude. 19 people showed up. So we practiced running. We went out and we were trying to decide at that time, when you run at night, how do you run at night? Adam White at Running Central is going to tell you how you run at night. You know, you run at night and you say, all the bugs are going to come and hit us. We're going to run back. We're going to run 24 hours from Memphis. However, uh, the bugs are going to be hitting us. So we, we even got out and put on welder's helmets because we didn't want the bugs to hit us in the face. And it took us about a half a block to realize that was really another stupid idea we had. So we got done with that. So we talked about this and we were going to go and we decided, you know, we're probably not ready to go in 1982. So Gene Pratt and I were running at, at, at Landmark and we said, okay, the next person that sees Jim Maloof is going to tell Jim, Jim, it's a great idea, but what we're going to do is we're going to put off till 1983. Okay, whoever sees him first tells him, calls the other guy, deal, Gene leaves, I take a shower, I walk upstairs, there's Jim and Trudy Maloof. And Jim says, Mike, how you doing? Fine, Jim, Trudy, how's everything going? It's going great, going great. Now, how's the run coming? Jim, as a matter of fact, we just had a meeting. And Jim and I decided we're ready to go. <laughs> and he says, good. I had to call Gene Pratt and say, I just saw Jim. He said, thank God. I said, no, we're doing it this year. So what happened the first year? I, this is a great story. So how do you get 21 people from Memphis to Peoria, right? So we drove it a couple times and figured out we're going to go on Route 51. We got these people, we'll all just take turns running, relay style, you run six miles at a time. We divided it up. We need money. South Dash West Kiwanis Club gave us $500 expense money. That's pretty cool. We didn't have a motorhome. Called Ray Becker. Ray, do you have a motorhome? I got one in a barn. Sure, you can use it. We got Ray Becker's motorhome. Got a couple of vans from SK Chevrolet. We all loaded up at Landmark and took off and up 74, going up across the hill, get to Pinecrest, and somebody says over the CBs at that time, the motorhome's on fire. <laughs> and so we all laughed, and I looked in the rearview mirror, and the motorhome's on fire. We pulled over, threw everything out of the motorhome, Ray Becker's motorhome burned to the ground. <laughs> Called s &K Chevrolet, we need some more vans, we need some more people to help us. They brought it out, we ended up getting to Memphis. So while we were at Memphis, we toured the hospital. Only seen it in the nighttime, seen it in the daylight. And, and it was really interesting to go through and see things that were there and to, to, just to talk to some of the people because most people in Peoria had never done it. It was only 1982. We left the hospital as one group. And it took us about, I would say, 50 miles to realize that 21 people can't stay awake for four days. That's not going to work. So we divided into two teams. So one team ran and one team watched. They'd go rest. And so we leapfrogged back and that's how the two team got started. Because halfway through, about half the people wanted to leave. They said, this is crazy. We said, we agree. Let's figure this out. So we figured it out the two team system. So we did and we, we took off and we got home that night. And we ran into WEK-TV to the St. Jude Telethon and we raised $21,500. And back then, that was a lot of money. Our goal was $25,000. Our goal today is still $25,000. So we, so we made it back and it was sort of fun. It was awful hard though because most of us were running a lot of miles with only 21 people. And so we had 10 people on each team and you were running 50 miles with only 10 people and it was about 100 degrees out. So we've improved along the way. So now what do we have? 
We have 38 cities in central Illinois. 3,600 runners total come and running in on Telethon Day, which will be August 5th this year. Um, set up as you run up Fulton Street, thanks to running Central and Shazam Racing, they have all kinds of stuff set up that we can run under with a timer on it. I don't know how they start the timer, but it's usually pretty accurate from when we left Memphis. And so uh, last year, this group raised uh, $5.1 million. So the total over these years, uh, the 36 years of the run, is $45 million. And that's thankful to a giving community, Peoria Life. What we do in Peoria makes a difference. You know, none of us, none of us want to invest our time, effort, or energy in anything that doesn't pay off. You don't call your stockbroker and say, hey, I got $10,000, could you lose it for me? You call him and say, I got $10,000, what can you do with it? So in Peoria, what we're seeing right now is that our money's making a difference. The cancer survival rates are rising. The vision of the people in Memphis is rising. People are gonna go globally. 76 acres of doctors and, and nurses taking care of kids for free. So the St. Jude Peoria connection is great. The running community around here is solid. It's together and we're having a good time. And so I thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of Peoria Life tonight. Thank you.